sign of the energy in the room. So for tonight, what we're going to do is, in a few minutes, I'm going to bring up uh, the three people whose projects we're going to talk about today. And they're going to have about five minutes each to, to tell you about what the projects are, what the background is, and then more importantly, what they need. Each project is a different stage of development, whether it's an idea or a concept. Uh, some are fairly well formed, some are still uh, in, in the forming stage, some are looking to sort of take immediate next steps, uh, others are looking to try and figure out exactly how are we going to get, the, we know what we want to do, but we don't know how to do it. So after the, the intros, we're going to break into three teams. So one group is going to be up there, another group is going to be here, another group is going to be at the back, and I'll tell you which, which goes where later on. Um, we'll have 25 to 30 minutes to sort of work on, on, the, on the topics there. And a big thank you to uh, Wes Regan and Sue Bealey, who have stepped up to help facilitate uh, a couple of Woo! workshops. So thank you very much. So help, and, and Sarah will be facilitating her own. Uh, and then we'll have a quick break where you'll have the chance to either stay with that project and go to the next level of detail and sort of drill down. Or if you want, you can move to a different project and learn more about that. So you don't need to feel that that's being rude by standing up and moving across. Um, one of the core rules of uh, uh, Change Camp is taken from uh, Harrison Owen's uh, rules around open space. Um, and one of them is the law of two feet. Is that if you feel you're not actively contributing to the conversation, you're not, or you're not actively getting something out of it, you should use your two feet and move to a different conversation. Because there's no point in being stuck somewhere where you're not contributing or you're not getting something out of it. So, so please feel free. And I have, I have warned the project leaders to not take offense when people stand up. So it, it is uh, happy to do that. So, uh, and then we'll, we'll, at the end of the time, we'll get back together again, uh, do a really quick recap, uh, and also have a chance for any of you who in, the, in the audience who are participating, if you have your own projects to pitch. Because at Change Camp, we had tons of different ideas. And the three that came out of it are only three that came out of that. We know that the people here have your own ideas as well. So at the end of the evening, we'll have a chance to do a really fast lightning round, just 30 to 60 seconds. So if you've got an event coming up you want to pitch, an idea you need help with, a uh, project you're looking for funding for, uh, just a good idea you'd like to sort of have more people help out with, you'll have a chance to do that at the end of the evening. Does that kind of make sense? Any questions on sort of how things are going to roll? Okay. Well, with that, I'd like to bring up uh, Sarah my corner who's going to talk about Leverage Labs. So Sarah, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what Leverage Labs actually are? Sure. Um, my name is Sarah Blankhorn. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, great. And um, I have been running for a couple years a project called the Peer Mentorship Exchange and um, have really been watching how businesses get excited about coming together and having that camaraderie and a sense of belonging um, and team behind I ideas, common challenges, pointing out blind spots. and. Building on that, I saw a need to bring people together to solve problems. So the Leverage Lab is really another iter iteration of the Peer Mentorship Exchange, um, but really meant to allow businesses to come together to solve complex problems that they couldn't solve on their own. What, what might be an example of that kind of problem? Um, well, uh, for example, there's some pretty big infrastructural barriers on the way that we have waste. So one idea that's been brought forward is bringing in the food and beverage industry and changing the default. So imagine if um, if your local coffee company alone were to say, look, we're going to make the default be everyone have a for, for here mug instead of a to go mug. Um, and if that business were to do that on their own, you know, I think it would tick off a lot of customers. Whereas if a consortium of a bunch of coffee shops got together and said, look, we're going to change the default together, we got a bunch of media around it, stakeholders and players involved, and everyone did it together, then it would be more of an exciting thing and I think would actually drive traffic to it. And they'd be able to really cut down on the amount of waste that they have. They'd probably bring in new customers and clients that believe in that kind of thing. And they would share the risk together. So that's just one example of, I think, what could be possible. And if you come to my session today, I'd like to gather your ideas on what some of the challenges might be. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Like, how can the people here help? What are you looking for from this evening for the people that come to your session? Yeah, um, I'm looking for some volunteers. I'm pretty far along the way in terms of developing the idea, and I've been running the Peer Mentorship Exchange, so I know what works, and I'm doing some market research right now through a business course that I'm taking. But I really need help on the ground with, with some a, a really key volunteer uh, who can help me um, with blogging, with marketing, with um, some graphic design stuff, um, with photos. <laughs> and uh, so a volunteer would be really great. And then, of course, also looking for funding partners to help me 
Uh, if we're going to do this properly, we really need to go out in a big way and have the right partners on board. So looking for your help in getting those partners on board, whether it be in a financial sponsorship way or, or other ways too as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, so that, that's one of the cool So looking for help on the on-the-ground stuff as well as connections with different funding partners. Great, excellent. So thank you, Sarah, for being very concise too. Great. So uh, Daryl, I'd like to bring up uh, Daryl Simmons from the Team Hastings Trade Association to talk about his idea for social enterprise. What's the idea that you maybe introduce yourself and talk about the idea that you're, you're going to talk about? Thanks, Steve. Uh, thank you for showing up, everybody. I really appreciate it. I just want to say, you know, we cannot, Team Hastings Trade Association, accomplish our goals without each and every person, heart, that's in this room. Team Hastings Trade Association, our mission is to provide skilled trades business and career opportunities for those that face labor market challenges. Excellent. So can you tell me a bit more what does that actually look like on the ground uh, with the trade or the construction trade? Exactly. The skilled trade sector, we, our mission is to produce carpenters, plumbers, electricians, and the like, painters, okay. rodmen, mm -hmm. yeah, and the skilled trades. Okay. And, and so how, how do you see, what's your idea for sort of solving this a bit of a gap between people that sort of want the jobs and the jobs that are there, how, how does what you are proposing sort of bridge that gap? Okay. From my own personal experience, um, this is probably the hardest part, I'm in recovery. And for the last two plus years, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of the best and brightest minds here in this province who have, like myself, had their struggles. But when they successfully complete their programs of choice, no matter whatever their labor market challenge may be, there's a donut hole, there's a gap between the transition from their program, their successful completion of their program, and into a career choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so what are you looking for the people from here tonight? What, what, what kind of stage is your idea and what are you hoping to get out of this evening? How can, how can the people that are in the audience help you bring this idea to fruition? Okay. Well, when you say labor market challenges, it has a positive uh, connotation and also there's a stigma attached. What Team Hastings Trade Association needs is leadership, uh, guidance, and um, teamwork. That's where the name comes from, team. Um, whether it's Vancouver Coastal Health, uh, whether it's Work BC, or ITA, or labor unions. Um, there's a great need within the community of those that face labor market challenges, and we cannot successfully achieve our goal of making, producing skilled trace, red seal skilled trace personnel without an all hands on deck approach. Okay, and it's, when we talked earlier, you are also talking about that you need some help on really refining the idea and getting a bit more crystallized on exactly what needs to happen, the different components of it to make it a reality. Exactly, um, input in regards to organization, Things of that nature would be awesome and appreciated. Okay, okay. excellent. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So this is a really cool project with uh, yeah, a lot of interesting opportunities. Um, what's that say? Slow down. How am I supposed to do that? Okay. If you haven't noticed, I speak quickly. So just as a, as a heads up. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so the third group I want to bring up, and not quite sure who's, are you going to do the intro, Cassandra? Or you broke? Okay. Uh, Cassandra and Mike, who are talking about Change Everything Day. So, well. Hi, so I'm Cassandra Reeve. This is Mike Kang. Uh, we actually have quite a team of us today here who have been working on this project. So if you guys can maybe just put your hands up so everybody in the room has an idea. Yay! Thank you. So. We want to focus on the idea of what's the best thing that could happen. The idea is that when you make, decide to make a change in your life, we tend to think about, you know, oh, there's negative repercussions. But, but when you make a change, whether it's something small or something big, really, you're going to make a ripple effect that could be an incredibly positive change instead. So what we want to do is try to encourage people to embrace the idea of change being a good thing and empower themselves by making a change in their life, whether it's small, you know, maybe they're just decide not to wear a tie to work that day, or maybe they eat dessert for breakfast, I don't know. Or maybe it's something bigger, like Mike 
decided to uh, make a big change in his life and stop driving his car as much and start commuting from Burnaby to Vancouver on his bike. Like that's a huge change that he made in his life and it's had a huge positive um, reaction and change of events from there. So what we want to do is not only just have uh, some sort of day event to help promote the idea that change is a great thing, but we also want to create a uh, community for people to share their stories of change. So that uh, we have an online blog that we're going to start, as well as we want to have just some sort of community that if you make a change in your life and you're proud of it, then you can share it with other people. And then you can see how that's going on in your community and there's a network that can support you in doing this. So change is a good thing. We just want people to know that and, and hopefully improve everyone's lives through that. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Mike? He said everything. <laughs> so, so what are you hoping to get from, from the session today? So, so today, uh, we've had a few meetings, uh, four so far as a committee. Um, what we'd really like to do is we have this idea, um, and we've, we have a ton of ideas of how we would like to do this, but that's where we're having the problem. We don't know <laughs> how to move forward from here. <laughs> So we need support, we need help figuring out our structure, how we're going to get this on the ground, and how we're going to actually create not only possibly a day event, but help create that network um, of people that can contribute. So that's part one, we need help with our structure, our how, and our part two is that we want to hear stories from you, times in your life when you've made a change, and create a collection of, of stories and experiences that we can also use to help populate and, and um, inspire other people to embrace change in their lives. So structure and content. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So those are three amazing project ideas that, as I mentioned before, are at, are at very different stages, but they have some things in common. There, there's a need for discussion around some of those, the, the five W's. Who's involved? Where is it happening? What really is this thing? Why is it happening? What, what's, what's the reason for doing it? And then the how. How do you actually take that idea and then make it the reality? So that, in general, that's going to be the, the structure of what the sessions are going to be this evening. So now we've got, uh, up in that uh, lounge area over there, is going to be a Change Everything Day. And Sue Bealey, facilitator extraordinaire, is going to be helping to facilitate that group uh, and, and run through that process. Is there anything you want to say about the process? Or you just want people to... We're going to use the first uh, session to talk about structure and operating principles. And then we're going to use the second section of time to play the story. Cool. That sounds very cool. So that's going to be up in this lounge area. And then up at the front here is going to be the uh, Team Hastings Trade Association. And uh, Wes Regan there, who has had a lot of experience in social enterprise from a lot of different angles, is going to be uh, facilitating that discussion. Anything you want to say about the session, Wes? Uh, no, I mean, I kind of structured it as well. Uh, in the first session, I wanted to focus on uh, finding the value, uh, exploring the value, and also some of the barriers. In the second session, I wanted to parse out more of the resources needed and, and the sort of team support structure or governance or whatever else might help to Okay, great. And then in the, in the back half of this, so, so that's going to be up in, in this uh, front part of the room, and in the back part of the room over there where there's a projector, uh, Sarah's got uh, some slides that she's going to show about, uh, about uh, Leverage Labs, that's going to be at that, that end of the room. And Sarah, do you want to say anything else about how that your sessions are going to be structured? Yeah, I'm going with a similar structure. At the beginning, I'm just going to unpack the idea of the Leverage Lab and give you a little bit of history about how it came about and um, all the the various factors. And then the second half, I really want to pick your brain around some of my key key challenges. Cool. All right, so has everybody got that? So Change Everything Day up here, Team Hastings Trade Association over here, Leverage Labs back there. Uh, we'll be going for 25, 30 minutes. I'm going to come around and let people know when it's time to break that session. You'll have a few minutes to either stay where you are if you really want to dive deeper into that, or if you want to take the chance to stand up and move to a different session and get uh, more in, into that uh, project. Before, any uh, quick questions, comments, concerns? All right, go. Sue's already jumping up and down. All right.